In this video, we will define the derivative of a distribution. Let me consider a distribution T, and let's define Z as the application from D to R that is defined by Z phi equals minus T phi prime. Now, phi is a test function, any test function, uh, which is in D, uh, therefore, I can uh, differentiate it, so I can use phi prime here, and t phi prime makes sense. Is z linear? The answer is yes, it is, because when I apply z to phi plus lambda psi, where phi is a test function, psi is a test function, and lambda is a real number, then that will be, by definition, minus t applied to the derivative of phi plus lambda psi which, thanks to the linearity of t, will be minus t applied to phi prime minus lambda times t applied to psi prime, which is z applied to phi plus lambda z applied to, to, to psi. Therefore, we do have linearity. What about continuity? Well, if I consider a sequence of elements of di, phi n, converging toward phi, then what will happen is that phi prime n will also be converging toward phi in d. Therefore, minus t phi n prime will converge toward minus t phi prime, which means that the limit of z phi n will be z phi. Therefore, z is both linear and continuous. It's application from d to r that has both properties. It is a distribution. And guess what? This distribution will be called the derivative of distribution t. So the definition of t prime is the distribution that is such that when I apply it to any test function, it is minus t phi prime. Okay, that is the definition of the derivative of a distribution. Now, what happens if t is a regular distribution, in other words, a distribution coming from a function f in L1 log? Hopefully, that derivative here, the differentiation we just defined, will generalize the derivative for L1 log functions that are differentiable. I'm not saying that all uh, functions in L1 log are differentiable. Obviously, they're not, and that's kind of why we have uh, distributions to begin with. But for the ones that are differentiable, so if you take a function f that is differentiable in L1 log, will, ha will I have, uh, did I extend that differentiation through that definition? Well, the answer is yes, thanks to the integration by parts, and let me show you how it works. So, I take a f, in L1 log, which again, f is uh, differentiable. Not because it's in L1 log, but just because I take a differentiable function in L1 log. What happens when I look at the distribution associated to that uh, f, um, to, to, to that derivative? Well, then, uh, by definition of uh, t f prime, the regular definition, it's going to be the integral of um, f prime uh, multiplied by phi over i, right? Now, because of the integration by part, I can say that it's going to be f times phi evaluated on, on i, uh, you know, at both, both ends of the interval, minus the integral over i of f phi prime. But what happens is that phi is with compact support. So I know that at the boundaries of this interval i, it's going to be equal to zero. Therefore, uh, that's why I have a zero here. I mean, that, that bracket, that, that bracket uh, f uh, phi over i is going to be equal to zero. So I'm just left with this uh, minus integral of f phi prime over i, which is minus tf phi prime. In other words, what I have is the derivative of that distribution uh, th that appears here. So you see that what, what, what is interesting here is that since this is true for all test functions phi, I can say that the distribution 
associated to the derivative of f is the derivative of the distribution associated to f. In other words, we have just extended the differentiation from L1 log to d prime. If you, if you take a function in L1 log, you can differentiate it the good old way, or you can differentiate it as this new definition considering that the function of L1 log is a distribution, and you will find the same thing. If you take a function in L1 log that was not differentiable, and you differentiate it in d prime, then you will find something that is not going to be an L1 log, it's going to be outside of L1 log. So you're really extending the definition of uh, the derivative. And again, if you, if you remember what we, what, we, what we said in the introduction, uh, I just would like to, to compare this with what, happened with, uh, what happens with the, with the real number and complex numbers. You know, it, you, take, you take square roots. Uh, if, if, if your real number is positive, then basically uh, by, by looking at what you have in C, it's not going to make a difference. What you're going to end up with is a complex number that is a, a real number to begin with, right? I mean, you take the square root of, uh, of 4, uh, then you get a 2 and negative 2. Well, that is obviously in C, but that was already in R. So you just it's just no news. But if you take a number that is negative and you want to take the square root, then obviously you're going to fall out of R and get into C. Uh, so you're really extending the square root in the sense that if what you had, you still have, but you have new things uh, for elements that did not have square roots before. And same thing here uh, with, this, uh, with this case of differentiation. Let me give you an example. Let's consider the Heaviside function, which is 0 on r minus, 1 on r plus. This function is locally integrable. I can integrate it on any compact set. It's in a one lock, but it's not differentiable, obviously. It's not differentiable because it's not even continuous in zero. So up to what we did uh, in this chapter, we would have to stop here, say it's not differentiable. End of the story. But now we can consider H0 as a distribution, right? Because it's an L1 lock. So it is a regular distribution. And I can differentiate it based on the definition of the, the derivative of a distribution that I just gave. So let us do this. Let us compute this derivative, the distributional derivative, if you want, the, the definition that we just gave. So h0 prime, or if you prefer th0 prime, the regular distribution associated to this L1 log function, or the derivative, the distributional derivative of that L1 log function. Uh, how is this defined? Well, for any test function phi, th0 prime or h0 prime applied to phi is minus th0, h0, applied to phi prime. Uh, h0 is an L1 log function th0, the corresponding regular distribution. Therefore, that bracket to the right hand side is the integral of my function h0 times phi prime over r, which is minus the integral of phi prime between 0 and plus infinity. But I know the antiderivative of phi prime, it's phi, and I know that phi is with compact support it's zero, uh, it goes to zero out, uh, in plus infinity. So what we will have is, well, zero minus minus of phi zero, which is phi zero. So for all test function in D, T H zero prime applied to phi is equal to delta zero applied to phi, which means that T H zero prime is delta zero. In other words, what I'm saying is that the derivative of the Heaviside function is the Dirac distribution. You see, the Heaviside function is an L1 log. Obviously, it is not differentiable in the usual sense, in the functional sense, as the sense that we used up to these videos, right? This, 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 this PDE class. Up to now, we would have said it is not differentiable. Now we're saying something different. We're saying it is differentiable, but the derivative 
is not in a space of function. It is in a bigger space, in the space of distributions. The derivative of this Heaviside function is the Dirac distribution. And obviously that Dirac distribution is not a regular distribution. It is not coming from an L1 log function. By the way, if instead of having uh, h0, uh, the Heaviside function, you had 2h minus 1, uh, which basically is the function that is equal to negative 1 on r minus and, um, and, and, and plus 1 on r plus, then the derivative will be 2 delta 0, obviously. Let me make a remark. Let's consider the function f that is negative 1 on minus 0 excluded and 1 on 0 plus infinity, which is r plus. Uh, well, that function is represented here, and it is differentiable on minus infinity 0 excluded and on 0 plus infinity 0 excluded, but not on uh, the entire space. It's not a differentiable function. So it's going to be an L1 log, but it is not going to be a function that is uh, differentiable in L1 log, as we said. Now, if instead of considering this function, I consider uh, that function, hyperbolic tangent of x, well, uh, and I can also plot its derivative, which is 1 minus hyperbolic tangent square. Now, g, you can differentiate it everywhere. It's a differentiable function, it's in one log, and you can differentiate it, here's the derivative, it's absolutely no problem. What's interesting is that if you actually look at uh, n times uh, x instead of x, so a public tangent of nx, then it's, um, well, it's pointwise converging toward uh, that function f but in zero, and really kind of looks the same, right? Uh, look at what happens to the derivative of gn. The derivative of gn, gn prime, is as expected uh, very close to zero uh, until it reaches uh, zero. I mean, obviously on, on gn, I mean, it's, it's kind of flat. And then it's, uh, it's going up pretty quickly, which means the derivative is going to spike, uh, and then it's going to be flat again, which uh, somehow flat, which means the derivative is going to go back to, to zero. So you have this behavior where when n goes to plus infinity, uh, the, the derivative obviously is, is getting, um, is spiking up uh, further and further up uh, on, on, on with, with uh, but, but it's on a narrower um, uh, interval. So what, what we have here is, uh, well, gn can be completely differentiated, that's not a problem, but in terms of, of limit, you can obviously see that gn prime does not seem to converge in the space of function. And the reason why I'm pointing this out is because you, you, I mean, some people say uh, that, uh, that that function gn prime would uh, converge toward the Dirac function, uh, which is a major abuse because, number one, the Dirac distribution is not a function. I mean, you cannot really define a function as zero everywhere and plus infinity in, in zero. I mean, you could do that, but I mean, then you could not really use it as a function. It will not be very useful as a function. Uh, and the other thing is that you can't really converge in, in a space where you have not defined the, the, the proper topology. So, so it would be an abuse to say that gn prime converges toward the Dirac function, um, even though some people say that, what they mean is that in another space, in the space of function, basically the space of distributions, what we have is a convergence toward the Dirac distribution. And that's actually a much a better way to say it and actually to present it. Okay, uh, before we actually uh, conclude this video, I would like to give a proposition uh, stating this. If you have a function in L1 log and it is differentiable, then the derivative is in L1 log and the regular distribution associated to the derivative is the derivative of the associated uh, distribution to f. That is basically summarizing what we meant earlier by we have extended the differentiation of L1 log to d prime.
On top of this, if we have jumps, in other words, points of discontinuities, what happens is that we will have Dirac distributions that will appear at this point. Uh, and what, what we have is this formula, which is quite interesting, which is that the distributional derivative of a, L, of, of, of a function, which is piecewise continuous, is going to be, well, the derivative of that uh, of that of that of that uh, of that function of that piecewise continuous function plus these uh, jumps that are um, f a i plus minus a f a f a i minus where a are the points of discontinuities uh, and so f a i plus and f a i minus are the values of f uh, just before and just after the right way to say it, of course, is the limit to the left and the limit to the right, okay? So uh, here's what we have, the jump formula that is quite uh, interesting and quite useful. Let me conclude this video now with uh, pointing out what uh, we have when we say that L1 log is included in D prime and make the comparison with what we had with R included in C. And le let, me, let, me, let me just... Uh, um, just remind you what we had when we said that R is included in C. Uh, we said that uh, basically every element now has square roots. That's why we had C to begin with. And we extended the plus and the multiplication of R to C. We lost a few things though. We lost the order relations. Actually, I should not say we lost the, uh, the, the, the order relations because, I mean, you can always order elements of C. But what you do is, if you do orders element of C, this become not compatible with plus and multiplication, which means that it's kind of useless. So, just in short, you say you lost the order relation uh, in C. Now for distributions and L1 log. L1 log is included in D prime. Every element of L1 log can now be differentiated. We've extended the plus operation and the product with a C infinity function. We also have extended the differentiation. And you could see, uh, even though we don't, we're not doing it in this class, that we can extend the convolution products, uh, that we can extend the, tr the, the Fourier transform. So there are a lot of things we can extend. For the Fourier transform, we need to be careful because we have to, to talk about the, 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 some, 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 some subspace of, well, I mean, it's a little bit complicated. Uh, we, we have to talk about the, 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 Schwartz, the, the, the Schwartz space, but I mean, I'm not going to get into these details, but we can extend uh, quite a few things. Not everything, obviously. Uh, we could not extend the multiplication of two functions. That's not something we could do. Uh, and possibly other operations can also not be extended, but uh, we, 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 we lost a few things. Uh, as we did when we went from R to C, we lost a few things as well. By the way, uh, one thing that looks like uh, is absolutely awful uh, is that we lost the capability to compute the function at a given point, right? I mean, if you think about it, when, when functions were first introduced to you when you were in high school, they were really some kind of a factory where you fit, where you were fitting them in with numbers and they were giving you back, giving, you, giving out numbers, right? That was kind of the, the, the very definition, the very concept of a function. And with distributions, obviously you lost that, you can't do that. But I would like to say that you kind of already lost that uh, capability to compute uh, a function at a point when you define the LP spaces with a straight L, meaning that we have a class of functions and not a function. So that was already lost, so don't feel too bad if, you, if you're losing this here because it's really uh, something you already lost.